But let's actually jump into the pick and ban here, as Alchemist is definitely the de facto carry for both of these teams already removed. So I'm actually thinking that Anti Mage might be kind of the um, pure band out. Well, never mind, as that is also taken out. So these are the two top tier carries that each team really wants. So Alchemist with the Grievous Greed and Anti Mage with the superior split push potential. They don't really want to. Uh, take any big contest before 20 25 minutes. That's usually the place out of the both teams and because of that You can usually secure a battle fury for anti mage around a 12 to 13 minute mark Alchemist can probably get his a little bit earlier around a 10 minute mark and just farm 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 away And without these two power farmers in a pool They may be forced to play at least a sli uh, slightly bit differently at least a what? What? I think you had a Freudian At least slipping. a slightly bit different. Oh, okay. I heard something else differently. But Batrider, because of things like Anti-Mage as well as Alchemist being banned out, is going to be in the pool. And I actually love it when Chinese team play Batrider. It gives them that teeth that's generally uh, not there for the Chinese uh, lineup because they play a lot more defensively. But this is a team that's going to be looking to push and gank very aggressively. And to me, it really truly tests how well DK defend their outer tower. They're one of the best teams in the world holding on their outer towers. But it's so hard to do it against Batrider because his his initiation path is just limitless. Just flying through trees, just going straight up with a blink dagger. And let's see uh, whether they can do it with Visage and Dragonite as their first two picks. You say that Batrider may give them some teeth, but I actually view it the other way. It makes it allows them to turtle even harder. Like Magnus, Magnus is not that great for his pushing just because the enemy team has more space to defend, to split up, so they can't get RPs. But as you push, Batrider and Magnus really shine because if you pull someone up your T3 or they're like clumping up your hill to try and attack that T3 tower and you have one of those big ultimates, they can completely change the game around. So although Batrider can be the aggressor most of these times, I think that it will play a lot into LGD's favor because if they get behind in the game, they can always just resort to T3 turtling. We've seen them do that a lot. Yeah, what it also gives is very, very strong laning. If we do see the Batrider versus Dragonite matchup on the mid lane, I really think that Batrider is going to completely shut down the Dragonite and basically have him, force him to have a, basically like a level 6 and he's going to be completely under farm. Don't be surprised if he, Batrider doubles up on the CS on Dragonite. I imagine Batrider is going to be forced onto the off lane and as LGD picks up a, another solo mid. But mm -hmm. uh, the option is always there for LGD. So how many carries do you think each of these teams are going to pick? I'm pretty sure DK are going to pick another one besides Dragonite, and LGD is going to probably pick another one besides Gyrocopter. I'm not too sure on that, though. I think LGD right now, with the option of Gyrocopter being a more early game oriented carry, they could just go for a quick 25-minute victory, 35 minutes, just dominate all of the map. <laughs> I know Bruno's laughing right now, but LG definitely could take the early game as they are banning out mostly the, the carries. I feel like LGD picks a very kind of uh, action-packed solo mid hero like a Magnus perhaps or Queen of Pain. They could just spread the map open and have Gyro to be their mid-game carry and just shut DK down before the game even gets into the 45 minute mark. Yeah, the problem with that is Visage just owns triple lanes though yes, and yes. that goes into DK's favor. Uh, so if they do choose to play aggressively in that, they, they, might, they might be taking on more than they can chew. So. I think that they actually may pick up Spectre. Spectre seems to be like a carry of choice when these top tier ones are banned out, namely Alchemist and Anti-Mage, but it looks like Lifesteal has also been taken out and Gyrocopter has been taken by LGD. We see a lot of teams, the first two bans against LGD every single time, Alchemist, Gyrocopter, and again, they're too predictable, everyone knows what they're going to pick, Gyrocopter, no surprise there. Yeah, actually, right now it seems like LD very excited to point things out as we do see Nature's Prophet being banned out as well. LD, what you got for us? Well, I'm, my one big concern for DK right now is they've picked the Dragon Knight as much as it's their signature hero. And traditionally, we've seen Dragon Knight struggles to win his mid matchups. There's a Batrider and a Gyrocopter, especially that Batrider. If it goes mid, could cause a lot of problems. Xiao 8, if he takes the Batrider mid, that 1v1 matchup, he can dominate it. He can snowball. If he gets a fast blink, it could be a lot of trouble. And Visage isn't a great support for rotating to gank. So I feel like if LGD put a bat mid, that could pose a lot of problems here for DK. Yeah, it definitely can. Uh, I, I do believe that Super is definitely the best Dragon Knight, in my opinion, in China. He is just so fast with that Dragon Tail using to initiate or even counter initiate. It reminds me a lot like his Beastmaster. Uh, but for now, we're going to be going back to DK, picking up their third hero. Nothing but carries being banned out. So we're going to leave some very top tier support like Rubik, Shadow mm -hmm. Demon, things of that nature. Or do you think that teams will be securing their... Um, 
Well, Rubik is going to be picked up right now. Do you really think this is going to be a bad solo mid, or we're going to see a, a different solo mid from LGD? I think it'll be a different one. I think there are a lot of different heroes besides Batrider that can shut down a Dragonite. Queen of Pain can do it. But again, they might go for more like a turtley lineup, passive lineup with Magnus. Again, Magnus, one of the best team fights. They do. I mean, it would work great with their lineup right now, especially with Gyrocopter. Uh, the main question for me is, can DK really change up from their lanes right now? We've seen Dragonite almost always mid, but is the poten is there the potential for them to do something different in the safe lane, possibly? I, I think I think if you run a run mode Dragonite, you really need things like that has a long initiation range. So Rubik gives you the telekinesis lift, and of course Visage gives you the soul some or the grape shell. But generally, Rifsage don't take Grave Chill to level 2. So mm -hmm. you have a very, very weak level 1 kind of tri lane. And because of that, I think DK is mostly forced onto that solo mid. Yeah, and I LGD, LGD knows that. So they could definitely pick around it mm -hmm. and draft uh, heavily against DK. I think, I think LGD right now is winning the draft, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Dragonite pickup wasn't the best. He doesn't really win win the mid matchup, especially, I mean, I don't ever see him like straight up just win it. It's usually just a wash or a lose for the Dragonite and LGD can really capitalize on that. And so, they will pick carry. up Naga Siren. So this is a, something that we've seen multiple times in the past from the Alienware uh, Cup, mostly just into a Radiant, Radiance Rush, right? Mm, a couple of times. We saw the support uh, support Naga Siren played by Brax yesterday yep. in the LGD end game and he went Lincoln's first, of course, the support build. So He's not really going to be able to farm our Radiance, but I think Zenith was the one that yeah. used it as a, as a late game farming role. So Rattlesnake tried to take it late, and then the 30,000 goalie came a little <laughs> bit quicker than that, and uh, the Radiance was never all 35,000. 35,000, my bad. I uh, underestimated LGD's uh, ability to take it late game. But Naga Siren here for LGD China, I imagine that's going to be the solo mid. I think that beats DK fairly okay. Her base damage is not where I want to be. Uh, yeah, but this definitely okay. could be a one row carry as Jaro could also switch to mid and I think Jaro also beats TK. Mm, I, I don't think I've ever seen an Asian team run Jaro mid though. Although I think he's actually pretty well suited yeah, for the role. Yeah. He's very good with runes with the DD and flag and the haste rocket brush for chasing potential. Again, a little bit of predictable lanes from both of these teams. Yeah, so LD, what is your thoughts on Naga Siren? I think the Naga Siren's a pretty good pick here. Uh, it gives you a utility hero that doesn't need that much farm and is strong in the laning stage. Also minus armor, very important versus Dragonite. Uh, I think the most interesting thing for me is just how are they going to punish the Batrider pick? He can jungle, he can go mid, he'll dominate the 1v1 against Dragonite. Probably doesn't kill a Clockwork, but should outfarm him in lane. Uh, there's so many options for LGD with their laning stage right now. They can run an aggressive tri-lane Naga, they can run an off-lane Batrider. Uh, a gyrocopter mid, a naga tri lane. They have the much more versatile laning draft. Whereas you look at DK and it's got to be a Dragonite mid. Clockwork's going to be one of the solos, most likely. And then it's just a tri lane. Visage, Rubik plus one. And as I mentioned before, Visage, Rubik can't really rotate that well. They can't rotate, they can't gank. Jungle is fairly weak as well as if, let's say, Batrider comes in and challenges Jungle with a Firefly. There's not much you could do. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I just want to reiterate my point that DK very well winning the draft despite being. One less pick. Dragonite or DK is going to select Clockwork as Jakaro being picked up here. Just a fairly stable support, long mm -hmm. range, which is exactly where you want to be against heroes like Clockwork and Visage. Yeah, decent combo with the Naga Siren too. They could potential set up for a somewhat of a Mamo combo, not as flashy as many of the other ones. But Naga Siren sleep into an Ice Path into a cooldown that would do just so much damage to DK. They only have one PK beat hero right now, and also with this recent Clockwork pickup, they only have one initiate slash counter initiate. Whereas LGD have Naga Siren, they have Batrider, and a well-placed Ice Path can stop a team fight in his track. So I think that DK needs more team fight potential. Dragon Knight isn't the greatest until he gets his items. He's just mainly there to be annoying and survive for many Dragon Tails to pick up kills later. Clockwork is okay, but he's probably going to lose his matchup versus the Batrider, and he can just Firefly over the Cogs for the most part. Yeah, I really, I really don't think DK have any one hero left in the pool to pick that could, they could win the team fight. Like, I think team fight already uh, very much so in the hand of LGD China. Mm -hmm. I think their best bet is actually to counter initiate. Bat jumps in, you lift him up. Or bat jumps in, you hook him. So I, I think DK is going to be fighting kind of uh, from a step behind. Naga Siren is going to be a big issue as well because sleep is just so dirty in terms of initiating. Right. Um, Rubik could maybe steal it, but any good Naga Siren will... will not give you that. Spectre yeah. being banned out here as definitely DK needs one more carry. 
quest right now. This whatever whatever the last pickup is. Yeah, what's left at this point? There's not much for him. There's no anti mage. There's a lone druid available. Yes. Do they turn to something like that here? There's also things like Luna. Um, that's pretty much most of his heroes, right? <laughs> Unless we want to yeah. go like pretty old school. You're asking who Burning's playing, right? Yeah. 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 In terms I mean, of there's like okay. like really old school Drow Ranger, but I reckon I, he should just. Get only have I reckon he should get Triumph Protector, <laughs> take it into the tri lane, <laughs> yeah. and farm with it. Get a Battle Fury. Dude, Mask of Madness Basher. I'm telling you, but nah, it's gonna be Luna. So as why someone who expected. Why don't they listen? Yeah, that's gonna give them a big a boost of team fight. Although. Again, Naga, Mirror Image, don't really care too much about Luna Beams. Mm -hmm. You could sleep and walk away from that ultimate as well. Um, Luna tends to get BKB. Yeah, they definitely need a BKB hero. And Naga eats BKB heroes alive, right? You sleep, everybody else can't do anything. You net the Luna, and then it's just a big clump. By the way, I can't believe it, but Shadow Demon is still in the pool. We're, ten, we're 19 picks into the, yeah. and bans into this draft. That hero is normally... Picked in the first stage or banned even. Yeah, he's really good a, versus Batrider too. It would be a great pickup as well here yeah, with the Jakiro. I mean, when I saw the Rubik pick, I was like, okay, it, you know, the Rubik doesn't have much going on at the beginning, and it might scare some of the, you know, some important like team fight heroes in terms of um, them picking him up. But the Rubik doesn't look like he's going to have a good time. I mean, getting an ice path would be great, but if he's up against an SD as well, the, the setup potential of LGG gaming is. Insane. And they can punish that clock if he hooks in. You just disrupt whoever's yeah. caught. I think it's and it's good against Luna I think because it's a great pickup. It's a great counter to illusion based heroes, which he generally goes for Manta. Well, let's see if LGD China thinks like that. Um, maybe, maybe I feel like Shadow Demon is a little bit lacking in terms of damage output. They, wow. wow, it's gonna be a Naga support. A Silar is gonna be playing a Lone Druid instead. Yao, it's gonna be quote unquote the offlane gyro. It's gonna be offensive trialing coming out from D LGD China. So we expected Ooh. these teams to play passive. And they're taking the offensive trialing right into the grill of that visage. Generally a very dangerous proposition, but mm. do you think it's going to work out here, Merlini? I don't think so. I mean, Naga Center is okay, but I think she's really good versus Life Sealer, and otherwise she's she is just lackluster at best. She's really great past six and onwards, and as a solely mid roll. But in the triple lane, I don't actually think she's that strong. You need a lot of damage, and Snare doesn't really do any damage. Jakiro does minimal damage with his ice path, and again, they they need you need damage in a triple lane. Regardless, we see Rubik fail sometimes, Shadow Demon fails sometimes because of lack of damage. I think that uh, like Keeper Light again, maybe. Mm -hmm. I gyrocopter can provide the brunt of it, but I think it's, it's still a little. I don't think it's strong enough to take on a visage. Well, DK on the dire today right now. MMY is going to be playing Rubik. ROTK on the offlane clock. Super is going to be playing a solo mid Dragonite. Burning the farming sensation on Luna. Last but not least, QQQ or 357 playing Visage. And on the side of LGD China, we have Xiao8 on Batrider. Looks like he is going to be taking the solo mid roll. We have DDC on the Jakiro supporting. I, th I guess he's just laying wards on bottom right now. In the bottom lane, we have Siler on the solo lone druid. And we have Yao on the gyrocopter. And last but not least, we have DD on the Naga Siren. So I think LGD, I like LGD's draft more. It just allows a lot more room for error. Because if someone gets starts to get picked off, you can just Naga Siren sleep. If Batrider uh, initiates, you can have a call down Ice Pad. There's just so many things for them to start off team fights. And Lone Druid is also really extremely tanky. If they go on him, they can just pretty much unload all of their spells. On the side of DK, again, their team fight's a little bit lackluster. They're pretty much just waiting for LG to go on them and then just BKB and use all your spells like that. They don't really have any sort of clean team fight. There's no ideal way for them to go besides just LG trying to, uh, they're just trying to tank LGD's, LGD's team fight lineup. This is one of the most unique smoke I've seen in a professional game. It's just uh, kind of a not exactly your first second smoke, game sound but they're coming in from the right side and they are trying to kill Silar and they are predicting it absolutely correctly this might be an offensive uh trialing switch they're coming around Silar is oh smoke's gonna get revealed and they will lift him up do they have soul assumption yes they do the beam's gonna come down I have all the burst damage in the world and Silar's gonna give, give up the first blood I think DK could actually just switch up the trialing right now and sit here and out farm Silar is there any rotation coming out there is none LGD is gonna sit with their lane and Silar, here's here's the really terrible thing by giving out first blood on a long druid. You don't have your bear for a full minute. You're I'm basically a glorifying range creep right now. I'm actually surprised that he ran the way he did. He was over here ch scouting with his bear, didn't see anyone, and he went this way to go to the lane instead of taking the safe way through down here. 
when you don't know the opponent's lanes, and he didn't because they were smoked, you really have to play passively. We see a lot of the lone druids sit here down at the T1, and this is going to be make it really tough for Siler now, especially with this ward set up behind his tower. It's it's going to be it's not going to be easy for Siler by any means. Yeah. Meanwhile, RTK having all sorts of trouble, but, he, but he's going to be in a safe lane farming uh, whenever he gets back to that lane. Uh, but at that time, Yao's going to have probably boots of speed already up, and they could easily dive. You can see a Siler just playing so passively now. One good thing about him is that his bear micro is absolutely insane. I don't think DK will be making type, any type of dives. Um, they could find kills fairly easily simply by lifting up and, and he's basically going to die because of that. So we see a lane rotation already from LGD. DDC and DD are rotating bottom on the THD and the Naga Simon respectively. Siler needs help. Yeah, he really does. Oh, they do lift him up, and the beam should follow through very quickly. Is he going to go for the first spot instead? No, it's going to be Rubik picking up the kill here. And again, Glorified Range Stream not going to do a single damn thing. The support now rotate in, but how much are they really going to do being a full level behind now compared to the enemy trialing? It's so hard to recover when you your entire when everybody is down at a full level. Granted, they do have the, uh, the pool available to them. DK actually did not opt to ward that, neither using a sentry or... And Observer Ward, they do have sentries on QQQ if they want to block it, but I assume they know that EDC is pulling. They have the ward there. Are, gonna, are they going to make a move? Yeah, I'm checking out the mid lane right now, a lane that we... Oh, DDC. Oh, DDC in big trouble. He's got tangling up, but the burst damage is so much, and they are going to get yet another kill. They are going to try to refocus on burning, but there is just really no early game damage. Like we talked about, DD on the run, being forced back. QQQ, lucky for them, is he has no mana left. They could have easily got another kill on top. DK dominating this early game. We expect DK to play generally passive, but there, there goes this offensive trialing, really taking LG China by surprise. And checking out the other two lanes for LGD, let's see if their trade-off has been worth it, trying to sacrifice Siler for the first couple minutes without having any support. Gyrocopter has 13 last hits and 6 denies compared to Clockwork 7 and 2, so about double. Um, you generally expect a Gyrocopter to win this lane, although he is in the off lane, so pretty good trade for LGD up there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Xiao8 has a ton of denies. 13 less hits, 10 denies, and Super has 9 less hits, but only 1 deny. So, again, Batrider expected to win this matchup, and he's winning by a, a pretty good margin. But I don't feel like he's winning enough to make up for all the deficit they have on the bot lane. Neither lane is winning enough. So, I think LG definitely on the back foot of things. Gyrocopter boots to speed, and he's already being able to start to look up kills on our ROTK. ROTK gotta be very careful of using his power cogs, because if he accidentally cogs the gyro within next to him, he's dead. Uh, so it's definitely one of the tougher lane for him, but he's doing okay for now. And we see, we saw DK just try and place a ward here. We saw Visage place a central ward at the Magic Bush. However, it did recently get dewarded by DD. They're trying everything they can to shut down this triple lane and secure farm for Burning. Burning at 13 and 11, not the highest CS for him at the point in the game. He's actually third place for last assist right now, but he's been getting a lot of experience and a lot of uh, assist gold too. I really like this rotation coming out from DK. They're saying, hey, you guys rotated in your support. Really can't come in from the front anymore. They smoke up. Thought about ganking mid, but they're not the me best mid gankers. They're going to smoke around, and they do lift up Jakiro. He's basically dead. Luna has Tranquil Boots, so he could really come in from afar. No, they're going to be backstabbing. Silar is going to be running to the north and burning in bigger trouble because that bear doing a ton of damage. They're now refocusing on DD. DD running south. Gets lifted up. Beam comes down, and they're going to get yet another kill. Luna's still in big trouble, though. Here comes Silar. Nice body blocking. Can he run out? Dual Breath comes out. And and they are going to get one kill. Trying to get the second kill on QQQ. Here comes a Grave Chill. And QQQ should be able to run away. One for one exchange. The key thing for that engagement is that Siler survived. And critically, Burning died. Wow, on now they pause and they actually ping out on Xiao A. So Alice Xiao A is rotating the middle. This was a terrible time for them to pause. I think they they can definitely retreat right now. Grave Chill looks like it's only up for about one and a half seconds. But it looks like one of these supports is probably going to die. He's only level 5.5 though. I think MMY is going to die. QQQ should have enough speed to get out there. Meanwhile, MMY is somewhat stuck. He does have boots of speed. 200 gold in the bank, so maybe he could spend a part of it on uh, getting a teleport score or something Cue like that. Cue it up on that sticky buy. Yeah, That man. quick buy. <laughs> One of the more important things, but what an unfortunate time to have that pause. Yao has rotated to the mid lane now. Uh, and, and Dragonite is looking to help on the bot. Meanwhile, Clockwork getting some free farm up top.
Yeah, I think Clockwork should rotate once he's 6, but he's only level 4 right now. Very, very close to level 5. 13 uh, experience away. I think that was a very nice block from Siler there. He blocked the path. Um, I can't actually draw on the map right now, but right above the side shop, you can eat a tree up there to try and uh, take the short way back to the T3 tower, and Burning definitely wanted to go there. I saw him trying to yeah. go there, and he was like, okay, well, what do I do now? Ran back into the THD, got caught there, so I don't think that they would have picked up that kill had he not done that, because he would have been able to run away from the sports. Great awareness by Siler there. He was the original target. Burning was playing very aggressively on him. Meanwhile, oh, supports are falling forward. True, what a ice path, and MMY is going to try his best to dodge that uh, fire flame break. Not going to be there, and Siler picks up himself a double kill. So what we kind of did not expect is the insane damage output of the Riptide allowing Silar and his bear to do all of the right click. And Silar, I think he's right back in the game now, despite mm -hmm. giving up first blood and the second kill quite quickly. He's got boots. He's level four, five. He's gonna once he hits five, this trialing gets a lot more difficult for DK. I think they should look to abandon this trialing. That was just good, well, so well played by Silar there. If they had killed him first. I don't think any of that would have happened. They would just escape with a Salar kill, been happy to farm and continue dominating this lane. But because he went up as soon as he saw them pop out of the smoke, I don't know whether they should have popped or traveled this way or this way, maybe uh, be obscured a little bit more by the fog. But because of the really quick reflex reflexes by Salar, he's recovered quite nicely. Starting off 0 2 0, now 2 2 and 0, almost level 5 with phase boots. He's looking, he's, he's recovering much more nicely than I anticipated. The thing that's most enigmatic to me, and I want you to get your opinion on this, is that why did they make that rotation? Gyrocopter was doing absolutely fine, 1v1 up against the Clockwork up top. Batrider is definitely beating DK. Why do you rotate your Bat Outrider into the jungle? I mean, sure, you, you could technically get quicker farm for your Blink Dagger, but now you, you just leave burning free farm up top as DK is abandoning that tri lane and making the rotation from all TK bound to the, the bot lane. Why is Bat in the jungle? I don't exactly know what at what time he did it. I guess the biggest fear of your offlane gyrocopter is that you're scared about dying, right? And you might you're not going to die to the solo gyrocopter because he doesn't have enough tools uh, in his belt to kill you that early. But if any of the supports rotate from DK using you mean die support, to the solo clock, I don't. Yeah, he's not going to die to solo clock. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, yeah, Gyrocopter is not going to die to Soul Clockwork. So the only reason he would leave the lane is if he thinks he's going to leave, or is he's going to get ganked by the supports by DK, or if he thinks it's going to be more farm in middle. But the wave wasn't really like pushed out to the opponent's tower. It was like still in this area, I believe. And I don't know. It was it was a strange move. I don't really know why they did it. It ended up working out to the best because DK definitely rotated up top. The entire trialing gone there. And now Super is rotating there as well. They're looking to destroy this tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, there's a little bit of pressure being placed on the tier 1 on the bot lane by Dyer as well. Here comes one rotation from the Bat Rider. He's 1300 gold uh, in the bank, so don't really want to die right now. Here comes a Flame Brick trying their best to at least protect this tower, but Glyph is already used, and there's no way you could get close because of that. Uh, threat of the long-range Dragon Tail, and Bernie is going to last that tower, so I think this game is definitely back and forth during the laning stage. Gold chart is showing that uh, slightly on the dire side after that tower destruction. I do believe DK is somewhat ahead, but not really far enough uh, to really mean anything, and Silar is getting some free farm. I do believe between Luna as well as Lone Druid, I think Lone Druid could definitely snowball a lot harder because he takes down tower and he gives your team so much gold. Luna may win you a team fight and take a tower or two, but Definitely not in the same rate that a Lone can. Yeah, I think it really depends on this. We've seen Xiao 8 already make a couple moves. He's 0-0-1, picked off the Rubik on bottom. And the offlane gyrocopter, he's just going to be farming, right? So it's really on DK to make a move with their clockwork pick. We haven't seen much out of him. He did get a bit of free farm top after the rotation from the gyrocopter to middle, but I haven't seen him since. I think that if they, they would have gone better with a passive pick, and because they picked this, they should make use of it, try and aggressively take over the opponent's jungle, de-ward. They're actually not going to be able to de-ward this, this century just slightly out of place. ROTK is trying to find some with a with a Rocket Flare scouting, but he doesn't have any backup on bottom, and he needs support if he wants to kill Siler. He's level 7 right now, already up in bear form, super tanky, super safe. Yeah, and uh, super can't do too much about it, huh? Uh, 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 burning is farming on the top lane, is going to be going for the standard drums BKB build. Like you said during the draft, BKB is definitely one of the most important items, allows you really to send it front line. And tank that uh, tank that bat rider, even if he grabs you. Super is going to be working for treads and drums as well. Definitely a very passive uh, early game, game game plan. After having a sort of successful trialing, here, here comes that push uh, being held by by LG on the bot lane, looking to destroy that tier one. But the rocket flare is going to try to slow it down. 
And we see Xiao 8. He's been MIA for a bit, but he's very, very close to his Blink Dagger right now. 20 or uh, 2,000 gold. He's going to so have it after Yeah, this he's going to have it right after this camp. So I think this is a big turning point in the game just because DK is still very weak right now. They have an Ogre Club up on Luna. DK doesn't really have anything. He doesn't. He hasn't built his treads, although he has gold for it. And Xiao Yi can really uh, abuse this time in the game before DK gets their BKBs. And they really need BKBs to be stronger in team fights. Yeah, I really like this lineup composition coming from uh, LGD. Because you could do a four-man push without the bear, and the bear could actually push the other lane by himself. And now it forces DK into position. Do you defend against the four push, or do you defend against Long Druid? Either way, you're gonna lose some towers. Because uh, in the form of a gyrocopter, in the form of a bat rider, it's so hard to defend that. And at the same time, if you lo leave Long Druid alone for a minute, he's gonna take your tower. Wow, if look at this aggressive position yeah, from DK. DK. Supports. I think they're going to get rocked with this. They have smoke. They have blink on bat. They are going to be caught unprepared for this. Well, one. are they going to go on Luna? No, they're going to go on Super instead. He's definitely a tank charge. Here comes the call down, and they're going to try to burst him down. RT comes in from side. DK is going to go down as a result. He's going to try to invis out, but a good flame break. And their Centaur, no, that's the enemy Centaur. They want burning instead. Silo is already there. Blink Firefly on top, and I think burning is going to go down. Nice ice path comes in. And the supports are doing so much work. MMY lift him up and they are going to get at least one kill. The cog's got to be perfect. And Siler is on the run to the right side. Nice ooze uh, being, or Orb of Hina being applied on RTK. Also, MMY is going to go down to Yao. They're going to try to re-engage on RTK. And RTK is also going to go down. LGD, like expected, after that blink dagger, Siler joining the fray. Not only are they going to win a big team fight, they're also going to get a tier 1 as a result. Great play coming out from LGD, taking a full uh, advantage in this game. And they they were kind of prepared for it. They had a sentry ward in middle, although there are no there are no invisible heroes on the side of LGD. They were kind of expecting a smoke gank, but, and I'm surprised that the supports were, or they were all the way over here. Mm -hmm. So ROTK had a nice clockwork initiate in, but there was no follow up. The supports were still running all the way over here, and they were just way too late to the party. Burning was at in between his T1 and his T2. Perhaps he could have ran up. Uh, over here, instead of back into the tower. I don't know if it would have made that big of a difference, but regardless, DK was not prepared for that at all. They need to try and be a little bit closer. There was a Lucent Beam to try and uh, prevent the bat from pulling him back too far, but they really do need that telekinesis that you were talking about earlier. In the yeah, w when your Visage Soul Assumption fires once per team fight, that you don't win that team fight. So they really need Visage as well as Rubik to be in position. But DK just took a tower for free. This is their very uncharacteristic of LGD. Generally, they defend their tier 1s and tier 2s to the death, and there was no TP of any sort for that tier 1 tower. Uh, DK takes, takes a freebie. And there is ultimate up on Naga, song of the, on Naga Siren, rather, and Batrider has his lasso up, so I think they're going to try and contest it, but notice, they're all five grouped up together. This is much better for them. They know that they lost the team fight, but it was purely because of positioning purposes, and now they just got a free T1 and tower. Everyone's ultimate is up. They are ready to fight. Actually, Dragon Form is still down. Let's check this ancient stack right now. There's no stacking on the side of DK. Supports have been busy roaming around trying to stick together. Rubik and Visage can't really do too much by themselves, at least not until either of them are six. And speaking of six, we don't see Spell Seal up on the Rubik, but we do have the Familiars out and scouting a little bit right now. This is definitely one of the most obvious smoke gang being concocted by LGD because you see the creep wave, they're definitely in front of tier two towers on both the other lanes. And uh, for a second there, nobody actually was actually farming that. And that's definitely a telltale sign and that the enemy team is up to no good. Uh, they are expecting a tier one push. They're grouping very far back behind and again. That is the annoyance factor that you're dealing against a Batrider. I really like to see these uh, Familiar being split up one over here one over here, and basically that will cut off any type of initiation path that Xiaoyi could take. And it looks like they're going to put pressure on this. The problem with DK's lineup, again, they don't have a really good anti-push. DK kind of has to be really close to breathe fire. So does the Rubik, and Luna can't auto-attack it. And definitely not at this point in the game without her BKB. So Xiaoyi will just initiate on anyone that tries to uh, deny this creep wave. Here comes Xiaoyi. He's jumping on the right side. These birds trying to do some work, but not going to be enough. Luna, though, getting very good position by pushing deep into the top lane. Uh, but you could definitely see how LGD could easily contest these towers, and DK can't do a damn thing about it. Yeah, it's it's smart by DK to not pick a fight, though. They know that they just don't have the power to 
mess with the bat initiate unless they have like really flawless positioning to pull them back but you can't really bank on that for these team fights and they're just looking for a little bit of farm burning is very close to his bkb now all he needs is a little less than 1000 gold for his mithril hammer and because they see this uh siler tping top they're going to be they're going to try to force the issue on bottom it's going to be a four on five at best and this is exactly what dk is looking for yeah i think lgd is going to be forced to kind of uh, give up that tower for free everybody on position super popping his ultimate a little bit early Gonna give him a little bit more damage on that tier one tower. Here comes a rocket scouting things out. I think Clockwork has been definitely a key factor in terms of zoning some of these supports out. It looks like LG is looking to defend here. Glyph is gonna be used. They can use a sleep to delay until Siler gets there. And is DD is looking for it right and now. Shao is looking for the jump on the right side. They definitely see him, and Firefly is gonna be used, but a very stealth and a quick retreat coming out from DK. Both teams playing rather safe, as you expect out of these two teams. You were talking about BKB being a big factor on both Luna and DK, but is it enough? And I, I just want to reiterate one of the points I brought up during the, the draft is that Luna eats BKB heroes alive. The, the mm -hmm. single carry BKBs, you sleep the whole team, you net the BKB hero, and she's dead or he's dead, whoever you... They don't really have that much damage though right now. Lone Druid opted for an early cloak on his on the bear, or mm. sorry, on himself, and then he only has a Gloves of Haste on him. Even if he goes for Maelstrom, that's going to do almost nothing versus the BKB Yeah, Luna. but it's five hero right-clicking on you. Is Do you actually need too many items? I think she'll be okay. The, the, the real big thing they have to worry about is just getting destroyed by the Eclipse. Uh -oh. And DK, DK just got cogged in by his own ROTK for, uh, ally. Uh, Shia is still looking for the jump. They're looking for this tier two siege, and you just put that bear in front. We just are somewhat reminded of how powerful. Here comes the initiation against QQQ. Call down is going to be used and QQ is going to melt. That's a ton of damage being lost. MMY gets caught by the crosshair of that call down. And that's two kills for nothing. A tier 2 is also going to go down. They're going to chase these birds around as well. Clockwork not there to kind of uh, counter engage. There was no lift to kind of uh, stop Xiao A from kind of going in against everybody. Mm -hmm. And LGD is show just showing that the bat pick, the first pick bat, how powerful it is and how easy it is to push with. Yeah, they really need a. I mean, they they try to counter counter that push with the visage bat hitting the bear, but that's not really going to do anything. They need to decide whether they want to fight or what whether they do or not want to fight. And their position was like kind of in between. They stood in this area, and of course, Bat Rider is going to initiate. He has his cliff that he can just pull you up, which is pretty much exactly what he did. And they like half committed to the fight. They knew that burning wasn't there, and even if he TP's in, he there, someone's going to be dead by three seconds. And he's not going to have his BKB up either. So can he really do that much? I think that DK should have just either sacrificed that tower and farm uh, a little bit more. And farm a little bit more or had uh, burning there a little bit earlier or waited for burning rather and been a little bit pre more prepared for the bat jump. Rubik being closer in position, just w ready, anticipating that bat jump so he can pull him back and not force his team into the call down. That was a really nice call down by Yao. If they force... if there's team Tate chase to try and save the visage. They were all gonna die. So Rubik tried to do it. And Song he died of Siren too. on the bot lane to defend this tower, and everybody is TPing in. Ice Path, Macro Pyre. Here comes a nice Clockwork just trying to disengage. You're gonna focus on uh, DDC, and DD should be the next target. Tier, tower, tier one tower has gone down. Here comes a BKB. Luna does not have the ultimate. Use it earlier in the river. They're gonna focus on Shao instead. Shao trying to run to the left. It's gonna be fine. Thanks to the trees. Any rocket to scout him out. They're gonna focus on Yao instead. Yao did down about half HP gonna be fine or will he the birds are coming down great stun coming out the rocket's gonna scout forward trying to kill Shao. Shao is gonna be alive the only person that's really alive is the bear running back and forth but the defense coming out from the naga siren not enough because of clockwork really kind of setting uh, aside of everybody and the bkb of luna despite not even having the ultimate you got a ton of work yep and all they need to do now is just try and delay the game a little bit play passively as they have been, stack the Ancients a little bit more, get BKB up on Dragonite, and then this is really their time to shine. Naga Siren is still a little uh, very weak. She's not going to be level 11 by the time that Dragonite gets his BKB, most likely. And then Gyrocopter doesn't have his BKB either. Again, they don't do that much damage, so even if they do net the Luna, I think it's pretty much just going to be for kiting purposes rather than actually focusing her down until they get lots of items on the Lone Druid and on the Gyrocopter. It's still going to be a while for that though. Uh, checking the Ancient stack right now, not stacked for either team. I'm very surprised at that considering the play style of these both teams. Yeah, go Graph going back to zero and it looks like we do have a slight pause in action. So let's actually get our analysts back on the back on the cast. You guys have been carefully watching this game. It's it's nine to nine right now. What do you guys think? 
I think the initiators for both teams are just yeah. doing a, a fantastic job. Shall we? And ROTK. And that's the storyline. It really is. It's like, I mean, I'm sure you're going to say, Rafael, I say, if, uh, as, you know, sorry if we're going to talk over any action here, but if the Batrider um, of uh, Zhao Wei gets in there, it goes LGD's favor. If, um, if it's ROTK on the clockwork, it goes in their favor. It's, it's really about those two, and they're doing an amazing job. I'm, I'm, I, what, what do you think about late game, though? Oh, um, looks like they might go in now. Here's an RTK hook. Yeah, and he is initiating against Silar. Silar does have to clash your Koka. Can he actually make it out alive? Looks like he will, but a second soul assumption is going to catch him on the tail and burning BKB up. He CC DDs on the right. He does not have soul serum, but D Xiaowei comes in with a counter initiation against burning. BKB is out. They do get the kill. MMY is very low. He also goes down, and it is a game of initiators. Both Clockwork and Barrier playing fantastically. But so far, is LGD getting the better jump? Xiaowei re-engaging with that Blink Dagger and Flame Break. And I think Xiaowei reigns supreme as he will be finishing a four staff as well. And that's when you have one way eventual swaps. Beautiful team fight, LD. Yeah, one thing that went wrong for them there is there was no an ulti by the Luna. As soon as the BKB went down, Batrider noticed that she hadn't used her stuff. And she jumped and, on right and there. And she jumped on yeah. her right there. And without that damage from the Eclipse, I mean, there were almost no creeps there. Siler, uh yeah, Siler was dead very early in the fight, so there wasn't the bear to soak it up. Naga Siren didn't have her illusions up at the time either, so that would have done so much damage, especially to the no BKB lineup from Gyrocopter. And I think that DK could have taken that fight if that hadn't happened. Yeah, I mean, along those lines, uh, in the earlier tier two, the tier one fight bottom, RTK, you mentioned the macro pyre from the twin headed dragon. He actually didn't get off Ice Path because RTK hooked in on him, and that's why DK won that fight bottom. In this fight mid, Xiao Wei just staying alive forever, kiting and controlling enemy heroes. And I think that's where you need your Naga Siren for LGD to have Son of the Siren up so they can disengage when Clock hooks in. And you also need the Rubik to be in position to lift Batrider. These supports have to be able to counter that initiation. If they can't, the fight's going to fall apart for them. I just want to know one thing as well. Um, LD, if this goes late, they're exchanging kills. Who do you give the advantage to with the lineup? Because surely, isn't it LGD that kind of scale a little bit better? Or is that DK? Um, for DK actually going to be an, uh, an effect. It's gonna, it's just going to be harder for Luna to get into the fights and do damage because she's got to deal with Lasso as well as Net. And okay. for that reason, I would give LGD the big edge. Not necessarily because of raw hard carry potential. I think Jar and Lundred are a bit stronger late, but it's more, it's just really hard for this Luna to get work done. All right, and the well, Dragon Knight not particularly farmed. We'll see how this uh, kind of pans out. Yeah, the tier 1 tower push is happening on the top lane. Firefly is already used, and DK smoked up. Clockwork is going to find Xiaowei. He gets lifted up, and he's done, basically. Force staffing himself to a sideline, and even Song Siren being used. I think LG needs to get out right now. A lot of them. <laughs> Look at these massive TP. The bear, I don't think he's going to go down. Yeah, the bear is going to actually re disengage. Despite how that team fight went, I still agree with LD. I think the better late game is coming from LGD. Simply because L LGD has better ways to actually disengage like that. You saw Batrider being caught out via Silent Siren. Um, you still have things like Call Down. You still have big AoE spells like Ice Path. Whereas if Batrider or Naga initiates against DK, you have what, a Clockwork Cog and maybe a Telekinesis Lift? These spells are a lot more difficult to land. This is a very dangerous push for DK there. I don't think they can take this tower. Uh, I think they should just back off immediately. Uh, burning, getting a little bit of Ice Path back up. Uh, Xiao is back in about one second. If they want to jump right now, they definitely can. They don't have Song, but they have everything else. Call Down is going to be dropped, a ton of slow. And Batrider, can he make that jump? Why is he not jumping now? Fire flying up. He will see QQ coming on the right line. No, he wants burning. And you got to burn him down before he drops his ultimate. He does even use a BKB charge because of it. QQQ Q, Q coming on the right side, trying to get some Q. And no, Super trying to TP out against five. Net as well as right click coming down. And I think Super is also going to go down. The, the initiation range on LGD is just simply too much. And DK loses yet another team fight. You said they can't make that push. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, they didn't have the cooldowns that they needed. They need really need the hook shot in. Burning was just way too far up at that point. He could have popped his BKB early, earlier in a run, but still, somebody would have been lasso, somebody would have been pulled back in, and they were not going to get away with that. And I don't really know what they hoped to accomplish with that. Maybe to like chip at it for a few hundred damage, but Batrider was less than 10 seconds up until revive. And of course, he's going to TP, and then he has Blink, he has Forward Staff, he has a really long range Flame Break. Their initiate is way too good. Even without Song of the Siren, LGD has the stronger team fight at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. So what do you think DK could do to kind of climb themselves back in the game? Because I feel like as this game progresses, the Long Druid is only going to get tankier and tankier. Mm -hmm. We saw their way of fighting was killing the Long Druid up front. It took them a little bit, but DK was still able to do it. But if the game goes like 
when Lundra hits, you know, level 16, for example, he gets a ton more HP, he gets a ton more armor. What do you do if you're DK? Your Luna's not going to get too much tankier as the game progresses, so they could still definitely jump on her all, all game long. I think they need to try and outfarm DK by split pushing. They tried a little bit of split pushing with Burning earlier, and it worked out okay for them. They lost a tower or two, but still Burning got a lot of farm, and that's really what they need. A little bit more farm from the Lunar right now. All she has is Treads and BKB. She hits like a wet noodle right now. All she has is really the Mithril Hammer damage from the Black King Bar and the Lunar Blessing. She needs more right-click damage, so that they can actually do something with her BKB. Her BKB is down to 7 seconds already, and the less and less it gets, the more dangerous it is going to be for DK. They need to try and win these team fights in a matter of 4 or 5 seconds, picking someone off with a Telekinesis, picking someone off during Eclipse, killing someone during a Dragon Tail. They really need to capitalize on uh, those three things to win the team fight. And I think uh, another thing they could do is also just try and bait LGD around the map, whether uh, trying to get them to smoke gank one of the carries, maybe sacrificing one of the carries even, to get the Roshan. And they have the Visage Bats to scout out a little bit. That'll help them out. LGD has been burning through smokes lately. I don't even know if they have another one. But if they force LGD into a push top, perhaps a T2 top, that would be an ideal time for them to take Roshan. They also need to get Ancient Stacks. I don't know why this hasn't been stacked all game. And... Neither has this one too. They both have pretty good heroes for ancient stacking. DK has the uh, the splash on the Dragonite as well as the bouncing glaze from the Luna. Meanwhile, LGD has a flat cannon, but neither team really abusing this fact. And Xiao Wei already scouting it out, knowing that they really need more farm to take this contest late game. I'm definitely agreeing with you with the ancient stack point. I, I feel like it's very easy for QQQ to send in one of those two birds, for example. Aggro the dragon and then draw them off. Very easy for the bear to be micro and stacking the ancients. They're definitely losing a ton more gold. LGD so, smoked up. Yeah, a lot more worry about the bigger game objective here. Looking for a pickoff. I think LGD is one pickoff away from taking Roshan for themselves. And that's exactly where they want to be. I'm not sure whether I agree with your point about DK trying to get Rosh of their own because... You're doing it against Naga, and that's always a dangerous. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I yeah. definitely don't want them to contest it. That's yeah. a terrible, terrible place for them to fight. Pretty much anywhere is a terrible place for DK they to fight, except for D3, right? Yeah. So I, I do believe you. You don't contest over this tower too much. Just give up for free. Really, don't think they could take this team fight. But look at the position here from Burning as well. Super. They they want to be in the front line. Um, because they're very sure that they could pop their BKB in time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I really think that only Dragon I should be on the front line. If Xiaowei rotates to the other side, though, we saw Xiaowei just sit right here to the left side of the tower. But if he circles all the way around and goes over here and cuts these trees down, DK is just going to get owned by Initiate. He's got a haste right now. It's very, definitely very dangerous. Tower is going to be denied, so uh, definitely stemming the bleeding a little bit here by QQQ. And I, I, think, I think DK is happy with how that engagement Mm -hmm. I think they could have been split pushing though. They were scared of smoke ink, but again, they knew they couldn't contest it. They were just all sitting around there really doing nothing. They didn't defend it. They got the deny off, but I don't think that's worth the trade-off. They could have been farming with DK, been stacking Ancients, been stacking Creeps, been pushing the side lanes with Burning. Again, they're like half committing to these pushes. They're like actually there, but they're not actually defending, and that's a huge waste of time. And they know they can't defend. That's a bigger factor here right now. Look at net worth here as we do. Someone expect the Radiant to be pulling quite far ahead, and uh, that's LG looking to secure the last tier 2 tower. This, for example, is a time to actually just say, we sack the tier 2, we go for Roshan. Right, that's that's exactly what they need to do right now, and Naga's not going to be able to get there in time. Batrider may be able to, but, but again, they have to take yeah. risk at this point to try and win the game right now, and I don't think the proper risk is to try and engage in a team fight and hope Everything goes well for them just because LGD in has been playing very well in most of these team fights. Shall we just really find those really key clutch initiations? So DK needs to take another route and gamble in the macro sense and try and split push. Hope that your carries can fa find some farm and not get picked off because LGD usually does 10 to 5 man and sometimes you just have to take those risks to get back in the game. Looking at the gold graph right now, only about 6,500 in favor of LGD right now. XP, not really too relevant, but 7,500 in favor of LGD. I think the biggest XP, uh, biggest thing on XP is a cooldown for the ultimates, the Song of the Siren and the Flaming Lasso, namely. But those aren't too huge just because the team fights have been so few and far between. Yeah, I don't think the goal or experience is any insurmountable amount, but I feel like the item choices on LGD will make this absolutely uh, difficult for DK. BKB is going to be up on Xiaowei. That means the initiation is absolutely guaranteed. Uh, Mech is up on a support Naga Siren. We have BKB and a already uh, working towards an MKB on a gyrocopter. 
And our, of course, our lone druid is absolutely fat at this point uh, with the Maelstrom uh, working towards an AC. So I feel like LGD is just five, ten minutes away from farming for their key items, and they're ready to break tier threes. Meanwhile, Dire, they're running out of options. You talked about the risk that they're not taking. And this is definitely a characteristic of how DKs like to play. Very passive, very safe. They trust in burning's late game carry power, but I just don't think that he's getting the farm. You talked about the lack of stacking. They're still not doing that. They can't take Roshan against a Batrider or Naga. I feel like they're running out of option, and if LG wants to exert a little bit more map pressure, I I'm not sure what DK can do. Yeah, I definitely think that LGD could flex their muscle right now and try and take a fight at Roshin. That's just a phenomenal place for them to fight. Fight. The only thing that's really bad for them is potentially getting hooked inside and uh, potentially getting caught in e Eclipse. But other than that, they have the so Song of the Siren, fantastic for Roshin. They have the Bat Rider. They can take the fight to another cliff or they can potentially knock them up the hill with a flame break. They have a lot of things going for them, and if DK clump up right there, they're going to be susceptible to call down to the Ice Path Macropire dual breath combo. There's a lot of things go working in LGD's favor, and they try to take a fight and force DK to defend at each of the T2s, but DK has been relatively passive. They know they can't win the fight right now, but again, they need to split up, find some sort of farm if possible. The problem is now they don't really have any sort of they don't have any sort of map control. I think that LGD could pick up a gem or DK could. They need to get rid of these wards so that LGD doesn't know where they are and they have to waste time running around the map like they're doing right now. Well, Burning working towards the butterfly, spending a big chunk of gold on that Eagle Song. Your thoughts on that item choice, particularly because he definitely has seen Yao's Demon Edge. He knows MKB is coming. Do you feel like he just is forced to get it against a Lone Druid? Or do you think there's a better item choice for him? I think it's I think it's a great item choice. I think it'll uh, mitigate a lot of damage from the bear, and a lot of it, it will just own Naga Siren's uh, illusions, even though that's not really a big deal. But they they need damage. They're they're really forced to just do as much damage as possible in during the BKB. And regardless of him taking more damage from the Jackcopter, I think that's a little bit irrelevant, at least during the BKB duration. Again, it's so important for them to pick off a couple heroes during that and. It'll also help him farm faster too. I think it's probably one of the most efficient farm items for Aluna at this stage in the game. Uh, what other item choices are there? I guess you could go Manta. Manta, not very good. They have Flat Cannon. They have a lot of AoE, and usually he gets Bat Rider Lasso before he can pop anything. So I don't think that'll be too useful for him. Bat, uh, the evasion will actually be a little bit more useful, I think. Uh, I absolutely agree, and I think I think the more underrated point I li I'm very happy you brought up is the fact that you farm faster. I don't think they're in any position to start you know, build towards one big item and decide to take fights. I think they're two, one or two, even maybe three items away from taking an even fight. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a farming game for DK. Roshan is definitely a big point of contention. They have birds parked over on top. They don't want to give anything away. In the meantime, you just play glass cannon. Hope you don't take any fights. The birds are being destroyed and Radiant says, all right, we, we're we telling you that we're Roshan, but we definitely have the Roshan advantage in the form of a Naga sleep in case of any great hooks that you might have. And if you play passive, we got the bad jump. So it is just absolutely impossible, I feel like, for DK to engage. And they're going to try because they have to try. Yeah, bad Rider does have a gem, though. So they have absolutely no go. vision The jump's right going to come in against Luna right now. Let's see if that Talisman Invasion is going to do any. Clockwork trying to come in for the Macro Pyre as well as Dual Breath. And they're going to just melt everything. And of course, the Eclipse is gone because, well, Luna's dead. They sleep over it. They're going to focus on QQQ. He goes down just in a drop of eye. Super trying to man fight, but he can't even kill a Naga Siren. And when you get team wipe like this, 32 minutes in, the buyback gets forced out. But I don't think Rubik could solo. Well, the second buyback comes in. That's cute and all, but that mid rack's still going down. Yeah, I really think the biggest uh, point that DK, the biggest mistake that DK made was just giving Xiao Wei Bat Rider. Yeah. This this hero is just so problematic from Luna. Usually a pretty reliable and safe carry, but if you get Blink Lassoed on every time, she can't do anything. And a little bit more tanky of a hero, for example, Anti Mage or Alchemist, like they both like to run. I think it was a good job drafting by LGD, good bans by them, and Bernie can't do anything. He has, I think, the most farm on the side of DK, but he just gets focused down every fight. Lasso into a call down, into an ice bath, and usually dies before he can BKB or very shortly after he BKBs. Yeah, every DK member is down a ton of gold. Of course, two of them down buyback as well, and 
LGD picks up another round of shiny item, and they're gonna get the Roshan now, like, for free. So, I definitely think the draft did not go in terms of DK's favor. They're gonna try one last hurrah. This has gotta be it, but before they even get there, Roshan's gonna be gone. I don't think DK should take this fight. If they do, it might be a frustration one. Uh, they, they should back off. But, yeah, LGD was on the firm driver's seat of, of the draft for the most part. And also, it goes back to the risk that they didn't take. Like you pointed out, Xiao A. Oh, they, he's going to be on the right side. Yeah, BKP, so he can't lift him. Super's going to try to right click, but he doesn't actually have Dragon Form. Luna does not have ultimate. This got to be the last team fight. RTK pops the BKP. He's trying to do whatever he can, but Super's going to go down. Luna's going to go down. This Everybody has to be is dead. Goodness. Look at this GG. That was ugly. I talked about a 35 minute <laughs> game. Nobody believed me in the studio. What were we sitting at? 34 minutes GG, and LGD will take game number one. Batrider. Batrider was the key thing for LGD winning this game. He just dominated his lane. His net worth is was more than Luna's at the end of the game. I think he had like 12,500, and Luna was just a little bit above 11,000. Xiao A just played like an absolute beast, and that's what happens when you get bat in easy lane versus a Dragon Knight. Yeah, versus yeah. a melee creep. I mean, he got his uh, blink dagger pretty fast. Immediately, they pick up two kills, and then after that, he just found initiation every time, whether that's just phenomenal play by Xiao Eight or a little bit of lackluster positioning on DK. Regardless, Bat Rider totally changed the game for them and secured this game one victory for LGD. Yeah, they had one really good counter initiation in the form of Clock. Remember that uh, tier one mm -hmm. bot tower where they started with the Song Siren? Initiation is the key of the game, and. Shall I just play better overall? It, the hero is a little bit more powerful than Clockwork, a little bit more mm -hmm. versatile, and extends into late game a little bit better. But um, that's game one for LGD. Let's send it back to the analyst table and let's see what LD and Bruno, or not Bruno, James think. Sorry, James. I was asleep yeah. somewhere. Hey, Bruno. Okay. How you doing? Hello. You good? Yeah, yeah, good. Um, yeah, we got to uh, chime in a little bit with some downtime. Um, then the game got uh, fast again. But you kind of said it as well. I mean, you started the conversation. It's like, Bat Rider against the clockwork that they were the two heroes that almost had to do the most yeah I in terms of when the team fight either kicked off or the uh, you know um counter initiation mm -hmm. and at the end of the day it was uh, all about the bat rider and jawe but what did you make of it i think it's just easier for a bat rider to get stuff done that hero has flying you can fly over trees you have blake four staff he's batman he's like a superhero sure. clockwork is much more of a, a counter initiator generally and when you run a counter initiator uh the other thing is that the Naga Siren was an insurance policy. So they had really yeah. two great ways to initiate with Son of the Siren, sometimes a Naga Net, although it doesn't have the longest range, and then, of course, the Bat Rider. It's a lot of pressure on RTK, and I think it goes back to what Merlini said. And what we talked about in the draft is when they picked Bat Rider, when DK chose to give it away, you have a, a mid who can just dominate against the Dragon Knight. And I think that was the biggest issue, not just giving away Bat Rider, but putting him up against a hero that he can crush. Dragon Knight Super actually did okay. Didn't feed or anything like that, but it's how much could a Dragon Knight really do in the mid game? He didn't have a Shadow Blade as well, and you can understand why he'll go for BKB. He wanted to survive and be yeah. tanky in the fights, but, but they, they needed it. that extra initiation. So maybe it's a game where uh, he should have gone for a Shadow Blade first and then back into a BKB. Yeah, he wasn't able to stay safe on the lanes, get his farm, and just having a BKB was just made him ignorable. Picked up the Lunar every time. Yeah. Then, you know, you just saw every single team fight. LGD were able to crush one pretty uh, convincingly. You know, they, they, the Rubik had a really bad time. I felt <laughs> bad for Rubik. I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to be playing Rubik yeah. in this, against that lineup. Um, but we have to remember, though, that DK, they did start off strong. Um, they had uh, a great kind of uh, early kills. Uh, some early kills. Yeah, their laning stage was yeah, great. Was great. Silar yeah. gave away a kind of questionable first blood. Should have been scouting with his bear. A little bit uh, lack of discipline in that case. And, and they got more kills on the trial and still Batrider completely turned yeah, it around. Yeah, as soon as Batrider had the blink dagger and was able to kind of initiate the game just when yeah. uh, very much in LGD's favor. So uh, that, is, that is, of course, game one and now puts LGD China uh, at a 1-0 advantage. DK now have to win two. I feel like if DK drafts better, they're the I would give them a slight edge. Like, if both teams have the same draft, I think DK's a tiny bit stronger, but they got completely out. I felt mostly outdrafted. They give up that many kills early and a first blood, and you still win. You know, A, you've had some fantastic solo play, which we saw from Xiao Eight, but B, you had a really strong draft. So. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, the, I think the Rubik pick was a little bit weak just because you talked about Shadow Demon being much better versus Batrider. They didn't really have any flexibility in their team fight. They had to rely on an absolutely sick, nasty hookshot cog separate from 
uh, ROTK, and even if you have that, they have the Naga Siren Sleep to just get back into position and reset or just drop a call down or burn BKBs, whatever they want to do. And the flexibility from their lineup was just way too great. And Rubik, I think, could have been replaced by Shadow Demon. Clockwork is only, is not the best counter initiate versus a Bat Rider because he can just Firefly over it and he can just force staff and just bring the fight away from them. It doesn't really do that much, especially if you don't gank with too much with it. Like they get it for team fight, but Clockwork's more of a ganker. I don't think he's that great at team fight, especially versus their lineup. Also, Cogs are just a, a double-edged sword, really. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're when you're up against. Uh, a uh, twin-headed dragon, Naga Siren. It's a lot of AOE, Firefly as well. You you hook in, and well, you may end up just getting your team killed if yeah. you <laughs> trap the wrong heroes in the cogs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I want to raise a hypothetical question here. You, we're seeing definitely Bat Rider is the most powerful hero here. Um, Bat Rider needs to be banned out, but that means things like AM and Alchemist comes back in. Ooh. Do you want to see Bat or do you want to see AM? And I, I, well, I think they can just leave both of them in the pool, right? So you can just ban... I was saying, if you get AM, we yeah, get bad. Right, they can just counter that way, and I think that might be more... Okay. more you know, the other big thing in that game, the more that I, I think about it and look at it, is they didn't have a great way to stop the five-man, because they didn't have that much AoE, which you talked about a lot, Merlene, and they also just didn't have great split push. So no split push, no AoE, or minimal AoE, how do you actually counter the five men of LGD? And that's where the anti-mage really comes into play. You get something like that, and maybe it's a different game. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think uh, actually the Darkseer was banned out by DK, and the Furium was banned out by LGD. Yeah, the, the, uh, the Nature's Prophet for RTK, yeah. one of his signature heroes, and that's the kind of hero I think they want if they want to... Mm. If they're going to give away that kind of a strong five man, they need some way to split push, because you could just can't take five-man fights against Gyro, Twin-Headed Dragon, Naga Siren, and uh, a lo tanky hero like Alone Druid, and the Batrider initiation. It's just too much. All right, yeah, so uh, as you, I, I, I'm getting overwhelmingly tired now. I'm still adjusting through all the kind of uh, uh, jet there, lag buddy. and uh, sleeping. Um, but they're in the lobby, uh, Melini. You're, uh, you're our checker. Sure. So um, you can just uh, see what they're going, uh, how they're doing. Um, if we've got a couple of minutes, maybe Carl wants to go to commercial break before we go to game two. He's like, mm, yeah, sure, that's good. Sounds should, good, should run out He's very obedient now. <laughs> <laughs> You've house trained him. <laughs> you stroked him a lot. <laughs> I, I've invited him to a party with a really hot cosplay player. Yeah. Uh, cos cosplayer. Oh, like he's guy. invited? Yeah. You didn't invite me. What's her name? Vampire. Vampy bit me. Yeah, yeah. So when I told him I had some invites to that party, he was like, "Yeah, where's my now invite?" He you can come too. Cool. Okay. Um, all right then. Yeah. So we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna have the conclusion. Maybe not in one game. Hopefully in two of DK versus LGD China. See you in just a moment. <laughs> 